and welcome to Africa Today. I am Esther Mokmariola. In a world where nations are often caught up in the web of diplomatic realignments, a shift in political order is creating a battlefield for the heart and soul of Africa at a time of unprecedented level of crisis and instability across the globe. From down in streets to the White House, Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari is presently in the United States, literally with Africa's most populous nation on his shoulders. And so we ask, what are your thoughts on President Buhari's historic meeting with Donald Trump and what's in it, not just for Nigeria, but for Africa? You can join the conversation and share your thoughts with us on Twitter at TVC News NG. We take a report now and Africa Today will be right back. Welcome on board. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari is likely touted as the first leader from Sub-Saharan Africa to be received by the United States President Donald Trump in Washington. The two leaders are discussing shared economic and security interests and ways to deepen economic cooperation between both countries. We have many things that we do together, as you know, probably especially on terrorism and terrorism related. We also have a very big trade deal that we're working on for military equipment, helicopters, and the like. Uh, we have uh, met before. We have developed a great relationship. And we look forward to our discussion today. Uh, very important, but again, especially as it relates to terrorism. And that's terrorism here and terrorism all over the world. It's a hotbed, and we're going to be stopping that. Um, certainly, security. The main issue, we are very grateful to the United States for agreeing to give us the aircraft we asked for, the spare parts. We are even more grateful for the physical uh, presence of the United States uh, uh, military uh, subsidies that go to our institutions in Nigeria and train them and go to the front in the Northeast to see how they are performing as a result of the training given to them. So the commitment of the United States in uh, uh, get rid of terrorism across the world, we are first-hand experience of that, and we are very grateful for it. Boko Haram militants launched the insurgency in 2009, which President Buhari faces multiple security challenges, including the nine-year-old insurgency by Boko Haram jihadists in the northeast and mountain insecurity in the center of the country. Senior Nigerian government officials will also discuss a number of projects with executives from major United States companies. Welcome back. Prior to President Buhari's visit, the United States government released a human rights report on Nigeria saying grave violations increased in 2017, while officials who perpetrated them were almost never prosecuted by the present administration. Now, this meeting marks the second time the Nigerian leader sits down with the United States president in three years he's been in power, the first being with President Barack Obama in 2015. Joining me in the studio on Africa today, I have Adini Kunu, researcher and social commentator. On Skype, I have Chuka Omumechili, professor of communications, Harvard University, Washington, D.C., and also I have Dr. John Mbaku, non-resident senior fellow, the Brookings Institution and lecturer, Webster State University, Utah, also in the United States. Good to have you gentlemen on the program. Thank you for having me. Now let me begin with you, Nadini. The meeting has been judged well successful. Yes. Both presidents had their discussions and of course what well, some of the highlights were about security, trade, governance, human rights, human humanitarian crisis and all of that. Now with all that being done, what do you expect to see from this meeting? Well, well I think that um, we have to get to work because it's definite that the 12 Tucano aircraft fighter jets will come to Nigeria hopefully July of 2020. Uh, that's tentative anyway. Uh, but of course, we have to look at our internal democracies. How do we operate? This is 
uh, practically May of 2018. We don't have a budget ready. It should have been passed. That's in April. That is actually rounding off by 12 midnight of today. Mm. So I'll say that even if we have the international community, particularly uh, by all assessment, the strongest nation in the world, come to our aid to support us, I think something is very critical at this juncture, which is that we must do something with our internal democracy. So I'll say it is positive to have been invited. And who doesn't really want to do business with the most populous black nation in the world? We have the population, and of course we have the market. But when you're talking about such relationships, these relationships must be well defined within the foreign policies of both countries. If you check the trade between the United States of America and Nigeria in the past three years, Nigeria is on the minus posture. And that tells you that it is very imbalanced in terms of trade. It tells you that they got more from us than we got from them. Whereas we are the continent or we are the people that they often come to for raw materials, much of what actually they used to bolster the economy. Mm. So the question has to be with rejigging all of the internal systems of ours so that each time we have the privilege to discuss at the table, it's not going to be win-win-win for one and win for the other. It's going to be win-win at par, which is very, very important. Mm. So I'll say that the president could leverage this, and I'm very happy that we didn't have such gaps as we have when the Commonwealth meeting held. Uh, and the questions, he felt could put him in trouble, he was able to deflect, which is, of course, a smart move by the president. Right. So I say that as we speak, it is very critical that we address those things that are asked. First, there should be a working budget for the year. Don't forget the one for last year was less than 40% in implementation. The one for 2018 should be ready because all of this money that are spent comes to the government as expenditure. So how do we account for it? So the country that we're in relationship with at the moment should be able to see us as a people that are indeed ready to deal with. But if you look at it in itself, the personality of Donald Trump also comes into the picture. If you look at the administration of George W. Bush, the predecessor of Barack Obama, the, po the foreign policy highlighted was basically to restore peace in Liberia as well as to do a lot of other things in terms of fighting you know, the AIDS pandemic. If you consider the Obama administration, he fought Ebola, of course, also encouraged the, uh, the, the United States military to help in Central African right. country. But if you're talking about Donald Trump, we do not have a clear-cut foreign policy from him, even if our own foreign policy from 1999 has been our national security. So right. what do we need more? Are the questions to be answered indeed qu questions to ask and still answers to get from this but let's quickly turn our attention to professor chuka professor chuka you are in the united states and i believe you would have heard the the press conference a while ago between president uh, trump and uh, president muhammad buhari what's your take on what really unfold i i think it's difficult um it's difficult to determine uh, what angles um trump is going to go through as you know, he's made some statements in the past and then did not follow up with those statements. So it's very difficult sometimes to go by simply the opening discussions. Uh, usually you would have to depend on an actual act by the government itself. An actual act, actual act like what are you looking at in this instance? No, in the instance, for example, if you talk about like the foreign policy issues, there are several things that can be done in terms of um, his relationship with Africa and particularly Nigeria. But even beyond Nigeria, since this is on Africa, there are too many other areas that um, uh, he could really act. And then we can basically be able to determine what is the U.S. approach to Nigeria and the rest of the countries. And there are many areas that we can actually discuss. Mm. All right, let me quickly turn the attention to Dr. John Mbaku. Dr. John, this, in one way or the other, one would say it changes the narrative of Nigeria on the world map, for instance. You no, know, Nigeria has been known to be among the shithole countries in Africa, although the United States president has come out to say that he didn't make such derogatory comments remarks but what's your perception generally does it change the narrative of how africans are perceived perhaps by the west well i think that uh, the most important thing that we have to look at is uh, to look at the way donald trump uh, president trump is governing uh, normally in the u.s when a president is elected uh, when he goes into power he no longer pays a lot of attention to uh, what you might call here 
uh, his uh, core supporters, the people who support him. Unfortunately, that's how Donald Trump is governing. As a result, whatever it is Donald Trump uh, does with respect to Africa must uh, uh, figure into the people who support him. And because the people who support him have, uh, don't have a lot of interest in Africa, I think that that is going to determine how he perceives Africa. So for a country like Nigeria or other African countries, if they really want Donald Trump to do anything for them, in other words, if they want Donald Trump foreign policy to include Africa, they, they the African countries, Nigeria, for example, have to go out of their way to show relevance to his governing approach. In other words, I think one way that Nigeria can show that they are relevant to the Americans and therefore warrant uh, interest in Nigeria by uh, uh, President Trump is for them to show that Nigeria is very important in fighting uh, uh, terrorism, which is something that is very important to Donald Trump and his base. And so if Nigeria is able to put itself in a position in which it can show that without, uh, without Nigerian cooperation, it would be virtually impossible for the Americans to deal with uh, transnational uh, terrorism, mm. especially with respect to what is going on in West Africa, say from Mali all the way to Cameroon. Uh, if Nigeria can situate itself in such a way that it can show <clears throat> that economic development in Nigeria will go a long way to um, provide opportunities for those people who are fighting the Nigerian government, like Boko Haram, yeah. uh, or the yeah. people who are in Mali, if, if the Nigerian people, the Nigerian government can show that economic development in Nigeria and as a okay. result, economic development in West Africa. All right, let, let's would quickly hold your thoughts now. Terrorism, Dr. I think Mbaku. that would attract Donald Trump. All right, let's quickly hold your thoughts now. We need to go on a very quick break. You're watching Africa Today, and we'll be back with more on this discussion after this. Welcome back. In January, Nigeria joined a list of outraged African countries demanding an explanation for the, from the United States ambassador for Trump's reported vulgar comments on African countries. While the U.S. policy and relations with Africa looks arguably weak as it took the Trump administration seven months to attempt filing the position of Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. Well, Nkunu... Let's still look at what they discussed today. You know, they yeah. mentioned issues of security, trade, yeah. and other areas that are crucial to both countries. And one particular concern that is common to both of them, or both of us rather, United States and Nigeria, is security. And you know, the president of of United States said all about supporting the government of Nigeria in terms of its purchase of military fighter military jets to mm -hmm. decimate the group Boko Haram and all of that. You know, but if you're to look at this matter holistically, do you, would you say that the the support that we're getting from the United States will give us that desired? change in security for instance the people in nigeria are really concerned about the way the security matters is handled we have a rising cases of uh, boko haram not boko haram rather we have uh, uh, cattle herders and farmers clashes we have whole lots of violence going on up in the middle belt and in the north so with this um support we're getting from the united states is it going to be is it going to mark an end to the travel to see in our country in regards to security matters well unfortunately i i don't see the the brightness in having you know final solution to this challenge really? because uh, internally if you must address security situation you have to do it from a point of view of just being very direct and doing it away from your ethnic leanings away from your religious affiliation I have read international reports about collusion long before uh, T.Y. Danjima the former defense chief actually said it and I tell you, it's been properly researched to the point where you find that certain persons are always looking in the other direction. If we, if we, if we zoom our lenses on the north-central part of the country, you find that the military has base in one of the most troubled, if not the most troubled state in Nigeria at the moment, which is Benue. Yet, in the past two, three weeks, they've been able to arrest less than five persons. I'm saying here that at the level of our security capabilities, as a country that has helped to stop wars on the African continent, the issue of the militias or the herders that are attacking shouldn't be what we cannot handle holistically. I say that. Nigeria remains a force to be reckoned with till the world ends by virtue of the interventions that have actually taken part in over the years. You cannot talk about 
most English and French speaking countries on the African continent that Nigeria has not actually sponsored in certain capacity. Nigeria has a $60 billion investment in South Africa, much more than the United States has before South Africa got independence. Mm. The records could be checked. I'm saying here that we first of all must make ourselves serious people to be reckoned with. You're talking about economy, for instance. There is no country where people invest so much in where there is no stability. And that is why you find out that much of the investments come to the southern part of the country because that is where the relative peace is. Yeah. Now I'm saying that for us to in fact say that this security situation can be handled, if for instance you employ a teacher for your child privately and the performance of your child became worse since you employed the teacher, you fire that teacher so you get another person that will impact upon your child positively. As much as I know that it is not piecemeal to fight the war against terrorism or militias, I think strongly that on account of their reference terms, the security chiefs of the country have not measured up. So I'm saying that the entire Nigerian army would not be projected as an army that doesn't have those who are capable when it comes to handling such situations. So I say here that for us to fight this so that I can say in this studio that indeed would have the victory, it is to address the core issues from the point of view of addressing it away from ethnic or religious leanings. All right, now let me quickly get your thoughts, uh, Professor Shuka. Do you share the same position yeah, as uh, Kunu here? Yeah, right now, I'm on one yeah, of the... Yeah, I largely share the same issue. However, I'm not quite yeah, sure uh, when what's is your program about South Africa, the money Nigeria is investing in South Africa. If the, if the idea is that such investment is not warranted, I would disagree with that. But I fully agree with the fact that the internal issues in Nigeria, in terms of the headsmen, as well as the Boko Haram issue, should be dealt with. Because he rightly points out that for investments to come into Nigeria, there ought to be peace. And uh, I, I think that that is really right, very, very correct to make that statement. Mm. So, so I agree those in that regard. So on, on the side of the economy now, you know, the Northeast, you know, has, hasn't had much development with regards to security and all of that. What do you think this government can do rightly, taking a cue from what, from its meeting now with the United States president? I think that there are several things to do. For one thing is, even though we have our own agenda, for example, we need peace in the Northeast and several parts of uh, Nigeria, not just the Northeast, in Benue, as well as the Middle Belt. But to do that, we also have to look at what's the interest of the United States. United States, for under Trump, basically is focusing on security situations. But beyond security situation, they also are looking at competition that they have with China in Africa. So those are two issues. In one of them, Nigeria can really work with the United States, which is the issue about security. If the Nigerian government, for example, is willing to work with the government in stopping the terrorist acts, that's Boko Haram, and they continue to, for instance, Trump had made some promises in this area, then Nigeria basically can also get from Trump support in fighting all the conflicts that it has within its own borders. So I think if those things are done, then you can improve the economic situation in the Northeast as well as other areas of Nigeria. All right, Dr. Mbaku, let's look at the issue of trade now with America. How beneficial do you think that will be for the people in Nigeria, knowing that a lot of Nigerians these days, you know, travel out to, to America just to make, a, make ends meet or make a living? Well, I think that um, a, a trade between Nigeria and the U.S. is very important for both countries. Uh, the only problem is that uh, historically, Americans have uh, been interested in Nigeria's natural resources and have not yet, uh, the Americans have not actually opened up their economy to Nigerian, uh, to goods manufactured in Nigeria. I think that uh, uh, the Nigerian government has a very good case to make to the Americans that part of the problem you have in fighting terrorism domestically or crime domestically is that most crime, including terrorism, has an economic aspect to it. Poverty is usually one of the ways in which uh, um, terrorist leaders can manipulate local populations into joining them. So if, they, if, if, if I were uh, a Nigerian official talking to an American official, I would tell them that if the Americans can help Nigeria, especially through 
uh, trade by opening up American markets to goods manufactured in Nigeria. If they can do that, just like the Americans did to South Korea and to Taiwan and to other countries in South Asia, if they could do that to the Nigerians, they could uh, help the Nigerians develop an economy that would uh, become the center of development in West Africa. Right. And that development should go a very long way to make it uh, easy for security to be maintained in West Africa. Right. Because most of the problems associated with security are uh, problems of poverty. All right. Now, uh, Mr. Kuni, let's look at another issue that yeah. pertaining to the repatriation of funds yeah. from the United States now to Nigeria. But would you say that there's every, every been a base of um, openness here in how this matter is treated because we are talking about money stashed away out of the shores of Nigeria yeah. for selfish reasons in the United States, you know, and some people are saying that perhaps the United States isn't, isn't you know, fair in this, in, the, in this whole treatment in terms of sending the money back to Nigeria so that it can be used for the country's whole development and all of that. Do you think that the, the government of America is trustworthy in terms of helping this country, you know, back on its feet? Well, trust is a secondary issue here. You have to talk about how the money got into the country. The money got in into the, you know, the money they have in their countries got there because people took it away from here illegally. And anytime such money is coming, they deploy it to the best of users. And this money, once deployed, stabilizes the economy of the Americans. So you don't expect them to cause a huge shocker that they may not be able to control by just immediately giving it out. So the issue of being good or doing the right thing doesn't really come to place. The money has come in, and obviously they must have presented this money as money is coming in rightly. So at the points that this money is coming, they came in as legal funds that they have put to use. So it's until the revelations that we got to know that this money should not have come in. That is one. Secondly, you have to understand, you know, the last speaker, Dr. Mbaku, talked about economic aspects. South Korea has 22 internationally recognized patents. The point is, for you to have international reputation in terms of trade, you have to come shoulders equal with your trade partners. And you have to be able to give to them such products or commodities that are of international standards. But if I look inwards, I find a country of 198 million plus, generating 7,000 plus megawatts of electricity, being able to distribute 5,000. I'm saying here that for us to achieve such status that would make the United States of America, for instance, to even open up our economy to us, mm. we have to demonstrate our capacities and capabilities, particularly from the home front. Whatever it is you are given to the world as your brand must first of all be appreciated. For instance, you're talking about the Apple brand. First of all, it's been accepted, utilized, purchased, patronized by the American people before they give it to the world. So it is therefore important that for us to be accepted and appreciated as trade partners near equal with the U.S., such that the economies will be open to us, we must do first our own work properly. All right. Now, Professor, to close with you or to wrap up the show with you and Dr. Mbaku, what are your closing remarks? Well, my, my closing remarks are uh, basically that... Uh, the, the most effective way for uh, security to be maintained in West Africa is for the Americans to cooperate with the Nigerians in developing a Nigerian economy, just like the previous speaker said, a Nigerian economy that is capable of manufacturing goods that are competitive both in quality and price globally, so that Americans would be interested in those goods, and as a result, uh, would, be, would make it possible for the Nigerian economy to trade uh, at uh, an equal level or right. at a beneficial okay. level with the Americans. All it right. is only through that process, uh, that is that process of development, getting okay. rid of poverty in Nigeria and West Africa, that security can be maintained in that region. Uh, okay. and, uh, All right, let's, I, I let's, think let's that's quickly the get your thoughts of a prof on this matter. Your last words before we wrap up the show. Okay, let me just address one of the things in terms of uh, exporting goods to other countries. Uh, let's remember that there is, in fact, an act that allows this to be possible in America today, the African Growth and Opportunity Act, which basically removes tariffs from African goods that get into, into the United States. That was renewed under Obama, and I believe, up to 2025. However, that what is unclear is whether the Trump administration will continue to leave this open or that they are going to look back to, uh, you know, renegotiating um, the trade on that matter. 
But for me, in my closing remarks, I, I think that Africa really needs to walk through a lot of lobbies. I know we have spent very few amount of money compared to the rest of the world or even corporations in terms of lobbying the United States. But this is the time that we need to spend money. Okay. Uh, because the Trump administration, the way they are right now, there needs to be very strong negotiation right. for us to be able to achieve our goals. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Chuka Omocheli, for your contribution on Africa Today as well. Dr. Mbaku, thank you for all you've said on the show. And I just thank you, Mr. Adini Yukunu, for, for all you've much. also contributed you. on Africa Today. Thank, thank you. you. Despite the Donald Trump's agenda of putting America first, leaders have come to the realization that no nation prospers in isolation, and the meeting with the United States President, with uh, President Buhari, opens a new chapter of strength to strengthen ties and foster trade. But at the risk of running a show of men in black, speaking into a microphone and playing around with rhetorics, it would be in Africa's best interest to look inwards maximize potentials and create opportunities to thrive. Well, that is our package for today, but don't forget to join the conversation as usual on Twitter at TVC News NG and follow me for updates around Africa at Esther TVC News. Until the next one, I am Esther Amokwariola and always remember, Africa can only get better. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>